Hello and welcome to another Writerly Witterings. What larks? Say hello to the Tender Rabbit. Um, this time I have been asked by Julia. Okay, for your next question and answer video, what do you do to force yourself to write when you just don't feel like it? There's a fun one. Clearly, the first thing I do is I get my daughter down here, she brings a camera out and I do a video instead. No, not true. She's normally at school. What do I do? Well, the first thing is, when you're writing, it is difficult. It is really repellent to sit down with a blank screen or a blank sheet of paper in front of you and imagine you've got to fill it with 140,000 words. It's not so easy. So, you don't. You work in chunks. Um, I work in one hour blocks and in an hour I know I can write 1,000 words and then have five, ten minutes off and go away and think about the next thing I'm going to write. So that's my way, is I split the whole process into different discrete chunks and write those chunks. And each time I write a chunk that means I'm getting that, I'm edging that bit closer towards the end. It does mean generally I can write about 25,000 words a week, which means I can then budget for how much time I need to write a book, although it always goes off. I mean, this year has been dreadful because every month we've lost a close friend and losing friends means that you do lose the um, motivation to write, I can assure you. However, if you're a writer and you want to call yourself a writer, you have to write. So, what do you do to force yourself to write? Well, I don't think forcing yourself is very sensible. I don't think you can force yourself. But... For me, it's enough, really, that I come in and I have a bit of a set routine. So I'll come in, I'll work through some tweets, get that side of things sorted out, and then I'll read through, not all of it necessarily, but a chunk of the work I did the day before. And that's a bit like one of those ski jump launch pads that they used to have on the Art Royal. You sort of feel yourself taking off, because you're reading yourself back into the story and getting yourself motivated again with the characters that you're dealing with. I know Terry Pratchett used to stop working um, every day just before a scene he knew he was going to enjoy. So he'd get the ideas together for the scene and then he'd stop working deliberately so that the next day he had something to look forward to when he started writing. That makes a lot of sense, but for my style of writing it's not so easy because my books are much more organic and develop as I'm writing them. I never know uh, which of the next scenes are going to be that good apart from battle scenes I can always get straight into a battle scene or the discovery of a dead body because that's yeah I'm weird I accept it so that's pretty much all I can say on that I think so apologize for that we just had a battery death on the camera never mind so to summarize I don't think there's really too much you can do in the way of forcing yourself to write the main thing is have a discipline know what times you're going to write um, so if you're the sort of person who writes first thing in the morning before work, then get up bright and early, sit down with your cup of tea or whatever it may be, and write for the hour or whatever you're going to give yourself. Write in discrete chunks. I work on an hour at a time. That means I can monitor and I know I can reward myself after each hour with a, a quick break. That helps. Like Terry Pratchett, perhaps, you might be the sort of person who knows that when you knock off, the next thing you write is going to be really good fun, really exciting. Then that's a great way to motivate yourself as well. But um, at the end of the day, there's no getting around the fact that um, my daughter just swallowed a dog hair. She looks very pained, or painful. But there's no getting around the fact that writing is basically a slog. It's not easy. Um, you have to sit on your own in a darkened room, in the cold, which is why I always have a jumper on, um, and try to imagine yourself inside the heads of six or seven other people, which is why many people don't understand just how tiring it can be. But you're constantly imagining yourself as other people. It's If you're an actor, you have to imagine yourself as one other person for a while. If you're an author, you have to imagine yourself as many other people for several months at a time. It is much more exhausting. Um, and there isn't any way around that. Basically, if you want to be a writer, get used to it. Thank you, email. So, thanks for that. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to share it, Put any comments in if you like, um, subscribe, tell your friends, all those things. They're all in the slots down there. And apart from that, hope you enjoyed it and hope to see you next time. Cheers.